This project was developed as part of the German Academic Exchange Service Workshop um, in 2019, in summer 2019. Um, so basically we went to the Gandamen market, market in um, Berlin and we took a couple of sound samples on specific corners um, in that specific area on that square. Um, so yeah, here a couple of screenshots and images um, where that was located to just give a little bit of an impre uh, impression. Um, so what was quite interesting that um, there were a lot of trees around with quite loudly chirping birds so that um, pretty much um, affected the the sound quality or the sound pressure a lot. Um, so obviously this measurement or this project is in relation to a specific time of um, day and of year. Um, in winter, for example, obviously there would not be that many birds. Um, so and then, so as, as part of a hyper parameters were obviously the distances to the trees, um, but also the distances to, to the roads around. Um, the colors are just indicating basically the frequency of traffic on that specific street. So yellow, let's say, is a kind of a medium um, um, traffic. So maybe five to ten cars um, per minute. Um, and the red ones um, were more like 20 cars per minute. Um, and the blue line was um, pretty much the underground um, train track. Uh, which also gave quite a lot of sound pressure in that specific case, um, even though it was under underground, obviously. Um, the black lines indicate the pedestrian um, ways through the uh, the square. Um, yes, so so basically, the how how is that? The hyperparameters are distances to trees, distances to medium, um, frequency traffic, high frequency traffic, train track. Um, but also the so-called betweenness. So it's a map basically showing um, the distance to the closest building geometry. So um, a red color would be quite close um, to a specific building, as you can see here, and the blue um, areas pretty much in between things, right? Um, in that specific example, I just took um, kind of this uh, frame here as my sampling um, frame. Yes, um, cool. So hyperparameter between this. Um, and then, so just to um, give a little bit of an example, let's say, um, how this um, was calculated then. F so for each pixel, let's say, or for each point where we took samples, sound samples, um, we could basically measure the distance. So the red line would be the closest distance or to a high um, frequency traffic street, the yellow one to a medium frequency traffic street, the blue one to um, the train tracks, the green one to the trees, and the um, cyan one to the closest building geometry. Obviously there are more factors than this, right? Um, the height, building height, for example, um, and this is just an, a Euclidean distance, so probably sound travels in a bit um, different way, but I just tried to keep it very simple. It was pretty much a 24 hour kind of project. Um, yes, so that's how, how that was measured. Um, and using these hyperparameters and the neural network, I could produce um, this prediction, let's say, of, of a soundscape here, let me hide these trees and sh streets. So obviously the red color um, is indicating a high um, sound pressure and the blue color is indicating a low sound pressure. Um, and it's very easily, um, you can see that the underground train tracks are quite influential, let's say, in a way. Um, yes, so that's how that was um, kind of produced. Um, and now I obviously can use the neural network, um, the trained neural network to actually um, predict soundscapes on um, a new design, let's say, a new scheme. So I prepared a little bit of something. 
me just hide this stuff. <coughs> right, so maybe also the prediction map. So, this is just a fictive kind of um, scheme, right? Let's pretend I, I'm having a design task, I'm on a design task. I have to design a new city quarter um, and <coughs> again there is like um, st high frequency streets and an underground train track and so on and so forth um, as well as trees, right? Um, and of course also the in-betweenness map which can be just calculated by adjacencies to building geometry <coughs> so that's all, all always given. Obviously it's not always the case that there's an underground train track, right? So you probably would have to take away the that hyperparameter. Um, but for simplicity I just um, kept all the hyperparameters um, I used to train the neural network. So yes, and the prediction would look like this, right? So here's my soundscape again. Um, again, like it feels like this open kind of space um, and the in, so the in-betweenness and the distance to the train track is quite influential um, but also the trees I feel like so it, now if I change the location of this building block for example um, obviously my heat map or my soundscape is also changing so now as a designer basically I can go in and um, be quite sensitive um, of the soundscape I'm producing with my geometries um, or even as a civil engineer or whoever, right? So if I'm planning a new train track and I know that there is a church or something or there need to be a quiet space or a square or whatever, I might not consider to not run my train track just straight underneath it. I don't know, whatever the considerations, the design parameters are, right? Um, so it's quite easy to see that the building geometries are not as influential, for example, as the as the train track or the or even the roads. I feel like yes. Anyway, so cool. Um, I can use this neural network now to make better design decisions from a sound um, scape perspective. <coughs>